Hey Elm family, welcome to this week's leadership chat. And my name is Michelle Joy. For those of you who don't know me, I'm honored to be Pastor Corey's wife. So I get to help lead Encounter Life Ministries in lots of different ways. And during quarantine, I was able to sit next to him for a lot of the messages and really the Lord stretched me in that and grew me in a lot of ways. And so I'm excited to share with you today what the Lord's really been putting on my heart, really working on me with and and he's allowing me to share this with other people a lot of my friends and so today I want to talk to you about just enjoying the journey that God has us all on a journey and there are different seasons of our journey and there are times where we're not sure what's going to happen with our job we're in um, a season of shifting in jobs or maybe a new ministry that the Lord is we can feel this confliction and the Lord is moving us into a new ministry or you know, maybe you have just had a child or maybe your child is getting ready to leave home. And so we're always in these seasons of not sure how things are going to work out. And the enemy likes to swoop in in those times. And he really likes to, he likes to steal our joy. He likes to steal our peace so that we cannot enjoy the journey that the Lord has us on. And God allows us to walk through things and allows us to walk on this journey because he's wanting to teach us and grow us. And he's wanting us to use the things that we learn to reach back and help others. But it, when the enemy comes in and he is tormenting us in our thought life, stealing our joy, our peace, then we get to the end of the journey and we're often so weary that we're not able to really help others. And so I want to talk to you today about some things that have helped me and some things that I've learned along the way about really enjoying the journey. And I don't have it mastered. I it's it's a daily practice for me. And so the first thing is really just trusting that the Lord has a good plan, submitting my life to the Lord, and each day saying, "God, my life is yours. Use me however you want to use me." do whatever. I know that your plan is way better than my plan. No matter what this looks like, I trust you. I trust you, Lord. And so um, James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves then to God. Submit yourself. And so I make that a daily practice that I, I just tell the Lord, my life is yours and you can have it. You can do whatever. And then um, the other part of James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I know that in seasons of uncertainty, the enemy really attacks my thought life and um, tries to scare me, put, put fear in and distrust. And so this scripture, James 4, 7, submit yourselves into God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And so it doesn't say he may flee from you. Gosh, you know, if you say the right thing, he he possibly will flee from you. If he's, you know, if you're having a really good day with the Lord, he's going to flee from you. No, it just says resist the devil. And so I just, I, I say, you know, I'm not going to believe that. That's a lie. I don't believe that. God, you have a good plan for my life. This is going to work out. This is going to work out for my good. I know that there are our troubles there are things that are hard but you have my good in store for me you you have good things for me and that no matter what life looks like that I know on the at the other end you bring beauty for ashes God so whatever I just trust you I trust you and so I, re, I resist the devil I have to resist the devil I have to say you know no I don't believe that I don't believe this this is what the word says and it promises the words promises that he will flee. Um, I, I, with that, obviously, trust, taking every thought captive. Second Corinthians ten five. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The enemy is going to tell you you're worthless, that um, there's no good plan for your life, that this is the worst, that it's. It's never going to get better. Never going to be better. That's the one thing. You know, he's like, it's hopeless. It's never going to get better. But that is a lie from the enemy. And 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says we have to take every thought captive. We have to take action. We can't just be passive and allow those thoughts to just come in and inundate us. We have to say, we have to stop them at the gate. We have to say, nope, not coming in. Um, we have to throw off what hinders us. So we take those thought captives take those thoughts captive, but we also have to throw off what hinders us. Pride, arrogance, anxiety, worry. 
do we think that we are we know better than God? Do we think we know better than the leaders that God has placed over us? Do we think that our ideas are the only ideas that, um, you know, that we're, we have the best ideas, we have the best way? Um, or do we have anxiety and worry and fear? And, and the Lord's wanting us to throw off those things. Hebrews 12, 3, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And so we have to throw off the things that um, are stealing our joy and that we're not able to enjoy. Like if, are we constantly in conflict with people? Like what, what is at the root of that? And throw those things off and have peace and trust. And then the last thing is find your tribe. Find the people who celebrate you. When you're on this journey, you need those people who are going to celebrate you and who are going to remind you of your gifts and, and who God has called you to be. And so it is so important to surround yourself with people who believe in you and who want you to win, who have the best for you. And not everybody has the best for you. Not everybody wants to see you win. Not everyone is praying for you. And so you need to find your tribe, those people who who pray for you, who care about you. And there are those people out there. Ask the Lord to show you who the, those people are. And so I just really want to encourage you with this, that um, God does want you to enjoy the journey, even if you don't know what the end result is. Even if everything looks like it's a mess around you, he wants to give you that joy and that peace in that journey so that when you get to the end, you're not weary and worn that you can reach back and help others. So my prayer for you is that today, no matter what's going on, that you can just trust that the Lord has a good plan, take those thoughts captive, throw off anything that's hindering you, and look around, look around, ask the Lord to show you your tribe, because there is so much joy to be had in this life. So we just here at Encounter Life Ministries, we love you. We pray for you. Let us know if you, you need anything. Reach out to us and we'll be praying for you and have a great rest of your week.